Hi, my name is Coach Jimmy and I'm coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. And today we're talking about leadership, specifically building up leaders. In my nearly nine years of business, this has been something that's been very interesting to me as far as what makes a good leader. Are good leaders born? Are you know good leaders built? Is it are they a victim or a production of their circumstances? And for somebody in a business like like I'm in, so and I had no business experience before I got into business. You know, before I got into business over nine years ago, I was a three-time college dropout, struggling out-of-work actor who had uh, previously been um, morbidly obese, 100 pounds overweight. So I didn't have a lot of I didn't have a lot of experience in success. I didn't have a lot of of business experience, and man. God knows I didn't know how to build leaders. I wasn't even sure I knew how to be a leader first. And, you know, in my industry, so I work in a home business where my success really relies on building up a team. So maybe you're in an industry like me. Maybe you are um, maybe you have a more traditional job where team building is, is just as important. Uh, an office Maybe it's, uh, maybe you work in something, maybe you're an entrepreneur and you're building a team of assistants right now. So maybe you're the front person, right? You're the front person creating the content and, but you have a virtual assistant or you have somebody that, that you, you're having to create a team of people to execute what it is that you're doing, maybe creating a coaching program or a podcast and you have an editor and it's about team building and really creating up leaders. And when I think of leaders, I think of people that are very self-reliant. Uh, when I think of leaders, I think of people that are self-motivated. Um, and it doesn't mean that, and you can have leaders that are employees. It doesn't mean that only leaders come out of an entrepreneurial situation or whoever is the boss. Um, I have a lot of people that I work with. I mean, my my team, my uh, people that are my either assistants or a part of my team, each of them uh, are tremendous leaders. You know, even though I've hired them to to do a job or whatnot, I mean, amazing leaders. The thing I find really interesting is, as a leader wanting to build other leaders, here's my conundrum, and and follow me and see if this sounds familiar to you. And I'm going to use my business as an example. So, in a somebody comes to me wanting to start an online business, that's what I do. I coach people and teach them how to start an online business and how to start making money really quickly. So somebody comes to you and says, I want to learn how to build a business. Okay, check. And you want to plug them. So you want to make sure like you honor the fact that they've trusted you to be their mentor, to be their guide. They're like, okay, I want to do what you do. Can you teach me how to do that? And you say, yes, I have steps. So in the past, I used to really super hold everybody's hands at the beginning. Like I was available 24-7. You could ask me any question anytime. And that got to wearing on me super quick, right? Answering the same questions over and over and over and over again. Um, you know, basically, be, it felt like I was just like an on-call ER doctor, right? And it was it was a little a little nuts. And the fact that you know it was interrupting family time, I had no personal time. Like you immediately tell people how to respect your time, and if you're available all the time, sadly, most people don't respect your time because they know oh. I can get a hold of him or her whenever I want, right? And so they start taking advantage of your time. So then you're like, okay, well, I, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create those boundaries, and I, I still want them to have support. Because coming from my background, when I got involved in my business, there wasn't really any corporate training. The people that I got involved with were also brand new, so they um, didn't know a lot to, to teach from experience. They didn't have years of experience ahead of me to get that going. Um, so I had to really figure a lot of things out on my own. So here's the conundrum I fall into. I want to really support the people that come in and trust me. I want to hand them tools. So what I started doing was creating playlists and making videos of like, great, go through this thing instead of me teaching each individual person and exhausting myself doing that. I was like, great, here are the tools to go learn, to go build. And you're going to have a couple types of people. You're going to have those that say, great, they use the tools. And there's going to be some, for whatever reason, that still still feel like you aren't helping them because you're not physically spoon-feeding them 
all the time or answering every question when you go, well, did you look at the video? Well, yeah, but, and, 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 I, and I don't even mind when somebody watches a video and then needs a clarification answer. I'm okay with that. But what I have found over and over again is as I look at other top performers and top achievers, specifically in my business, man, the same story happens over and over again. They're, the person that brought them into the business either didn't support them or just wasn't super involved. You know, maybe they weren't into the business as much as somebody else was, you know, and so this person made a decision early on that they were going to be successful regardless if they were being spoon fed or not. So I'm like, okay, that I get that. So how do you instill that potential into every person that comes in? And one of the things that I've learned midway through 2015 and going into this year is just setting expectations. You know, as somebody comes in and says, great, I want you to succeed, to know that I am cheering for you to succeed, but I can't do it for you, right? Because I tried to do it for everybody early. And that's like somebody saying, that's like somebody getting P90X and you give them the system right here. Start following this and then I'm going to check in and just see how things are going. And they don't ever do it They're like, oh yeah, well I didn't open the book or I didn't look at the nutrition thing. So you're like, but you want them to succeed so badly that you decided to come to their house and do the workout for them, right? Or to eat the meals for them. Well, great. Congratulations that you're, that you really want to help somebody so much, but who's getting fitter if I'm coming over and doing push-ups and pull-ups for this person? Me, not that person, right? Right. Who? And so, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's funny because people want to point the finger and say, well, you didn't support me or I didn't get this and that from you when I can have somebody else take advantage of the exact same training or the exact same playlist or tools or whatever I set up and really take ownership for it and go figure it out on their own. And it was, I made this joke. We, there was a group of people that had all, in my business, they're um, what they call superstar diamond, right? It's the top rank that you can make in this business. And I got put into a Facebook group with a bunch of other people that had hit this rank. And they were asking, you know, who had a lot of support from their people above and who had help um, building their team from the people that had come in before them and over and over and over again it was like well not really kind of stuck in a dead spot I really had to figure this out on my own and so I made the joke half jokingly I was like well that's it everybody that comes into my business I'm gonna sponsor them put them in a dead spot and never talk to them and watch a bunch of leaders like pop up and I know that's not actually like the case right that isn't actually what to do is to bring people into something and then abandon them but I did find it really interesting that these kind of abandoned people all figured it out on their own and I do feel like there has been seasons in my business where I have babied people too much that I I think it's because I felt like I didn't really have the training or the support or whatever that I overcompensated it's like that parent so let's say you had a really, really strict upbringing and you vowed that you're never going to be as hard and as strict, strict as your parents was because it was just so mean. So you go and overcompensate the other way, right? You do too much for your kids and you're too lenient with them. And there's really, there's really a happy medium somewhere. So I think that mystery in building leaders is giving them assignments saying, here is, here's the tool. Go do that and come back and let me know what you still need clarification on or how you need help. Because what just gets frustrating to me is when somebody, you know, doesn't even use, it's never been easier to learn stuff than it is right now. And I, and I tell my team this, as much as I want everything to run through me and as much as I really do feel like I'm a really good leader, I'm a really good teacher, if they wanted to go to YouTube and search our business, they probably really could learn everything they needed to know to build this business. I mean, it's never information and how to has never been more readily available. Now, the quality of that is going to be different. You're going to be able to get some some free training via stuff like Google and YouTube, and then somewhere along the way to actually get higher level training, you're probably going to have to pay for it, which is exactly what I did from the beginning. So instead of using my circumstance as an excuse for why I couldn't succeed. I started seeking out wisdom and knowledge from people in and outside of my industry 
And, and I think what's been a strength of mine is going and seeking other online marketers and people online that did things and then putting my unique, they weren't necessarily home business trainers or network marketing trainers. They were, you know, email marketing trainers and blog trainers and video trainers and speaking trainers. And then what I did is I took that training and figured out how to apply it to my specific industry. You know, so, you know, I say all that to say, so what is it? So what's the, what's the mystery of, of building a leader? I really think it's a happy medium between the two extremes. It's, and this is what I do now. Somebody comes in and I say, great, here's this playlist. Go through these, you know, here's some of the best videos I know to learn the basics of our business. And here is a Facebook group where you can come and ask questions anytime. Let's go. And if that person disappears and I never see a question from that, you know, if I never see a question from them in the group, if I never have them come in and share their goals or check in maybe once a day, it kind of answers my question for me, you know, and my tendency is to want to go chase after those people. And if you've followed me for any length of time or any of my trainings, you've probably heard me talk about the magic of the huddle. And I talk about the huddle and I use football as an analogy about you go run the play and then you come back to the huddle. And if my team, if I provide a huddle, I provide a playbook and a huddle and they don't read the playbook and they don't come back to the huddle to ask for help or say, well, this is what I went to activate. It just, it just tells me a whole lot, you know, uh, even early on. And I know that there, that there, there's a lot of fear in starting a new thing and getting it started, whether it's a health and fitness regime or a business or trying to do both at the same time. But I found like, that's what I got to do. I have to show them the tools and then you know who gets most of my time is those that I see out there taking initiative. Because I sit and watch silently a lot. I will hover around. And when I see those people, you know, maybe I scroll by their Facebook page and I see that they're doing the things, I'm like, ah, they watch the video. Or if they're coming back to the group and saying, hey, you know, I tried to find new customers or new clients and I'm getting these objections or this is what's happening. Well, you can't get an objection unless you're applying the steps in order to build the business, right? So the person that comes and tells me they've got an objection, they're going to get my time too because they had to go take action on something in order to get the objection, right? Or to to fail. or And that's what I tell people all the time that go through my trainings. I said the people that are going to have the most success are the ones willing to go mess this up the fastest. So that's really it in a nutshell. How do you build leaders? You give them tools and you say, you know, one of my mentors that that's taught me the most is Shalene Johnson. And if you're not following Shalene Johnson, you should. And Shalene always talks about, as long as you're taking baby steps, I can help you. It's when you stop taking steps and just say, I don't know what to do. I, you know, and, and you're not taking steps with me. I can't help you anymore. Um, my buddy Dave Ward also puts it a great way. He says, the minute <clears throat> in a mentoring situation... He says, the minute we have the same conversation twice, we have an issue. And what does he mean by that? It means if you've had a problem and I say, okay, cool, well, then you need to do this. And the next time we talk, you haven't done that and you're still having the same problem. Well, we're stuck, right? Because it only leadership's only going to be um, sparked out of action. So that's my key to you. It's give people a playbook. Have them have to take action to earn more of your time, right? And then eventually, because what you want, what you want to do is have these people that are self-sustained, specifically in my business, for years and years and years. If anything was going to happen through my team, it had to run through me. And while we had a level of success, it is exhausting as a leader. And then I never get to take any time away to work on other projects or do other things. I'm really excited about 2016 because I don't know that I've ever been as excited about going into a year knowing that literally if I fell off, the, if I got hit by a bus today, these people's businesses would continue to flourish. And I don't know that I could have said that in the past. And that's something to ask yourself as you're growing as a leader. If your mentor or who brought you in your business or whatever you're doing, if that person went away today, or quit the business today, where would your business go? Would it affect your business? Would your business just be fine because you're self-reliant? 
And that's that's a big heavy question. So I have to ask myself the people that I'm in three I'm in three masterminds this year of people that I paid a lot of money to to help me get better this year. But I can confidently say if any of those three individuals went away, I could still be successful from what I've already learned from them and what I've already put into action. And I just started with all three. We're only in February right now, as I look at my calendar. That was, that was why I was looking away. So be a leader, grow leaders, give assignments, and give your extra time to those that actually go and take action. Thank you for your time. Leave in the comments. Let me know what you're taking action on today. I look forward to talking to you next time. Go take action, and we'll talk real soon.